Okay, so what I figured we do is the, the fault current analysis module. It's pretty new on the course. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple of the basics. I'm gonna go over the things I think are the best to look out for, the small details that people tend to get tripped up on that cost some mistakes. And then after that, we'll work out a couple of the quiz problems together. And then essentially it's just going to be us practicing both the MVA method and the per unit method. So per unit method, a lot of times people have a really hard time with it. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's just as easy as the MVA method. Um, typically you're going to find one that, that you like the most. One's going to be more easy for you and intuitive. Best bet is just to stick with that, but um, definitely be familiar with both especially the per unit method, because expect to get a question on the exam where they are going to give you the actual per unit values. And then you're going to do all of the math within the per unit system. And when you look at the answers, all four answers will already be uh, in per unit. So definitely expect to have a couple of questions where whether it's fault current analysis or um, a couple of transmission line problems or even uh, transformers on a three phase line, be, be ready to just be familiar with the per unit system. So fault current analysis, it actually tends to be really easy once you get the hang of it. So it's not a bad place to get familiar with the per unit system if you're not already familiar, but you'll, you'll probably find that the MVA method, it's just, it's just a little easier. So um, do you guys have any questions before I pull up the blackboard and uh, we get started? Uh, I'm on, uh uh, always the, the questions uh, 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 for default current uh, coming uh, uh, compound of, uh, for example, generator and transformer and line, mm -hmm. or sometimes uh, uh, only uh, utility and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the impedance on the line only. Yeah, that's, that's about the extent of it. Oh, okay. Because you figure you've got, so pretty much fault, a fault current is what? A fault's going to happen when we have some tor sort of unintended electrical connection, right? Um, you're either going to have a branch falls on a transmission line or lightning hits a line or say somehow a bus bar in a uh, motor control center somehow crosses all the phases. And so really the only thing on the system that's going to be able to contribute to the fault is A, your source, of course, right? Um, either if you're connected to the grid, is the grid an infinite bus, AKA does it have an unlimited potential? Is it a finite source? Are you at a, a small facility that say only has one or two generators? Um, motors act as sources in, in the event of a fault. The pretty much the rotating magnetic field in the stator, all of that built up energy has to find a place to travel to and go in the event of a fault. So for a very short period, the subtransient transient period, kind of like what we talked about last time, um, literally that magnetic field is, is turning into a generator from a motor to a generator, that machine, and that current will actually travel up the line and then to the fault where there's essentially almost zero impedance aside from any arcing going on. And then after that, any, any impedance on the line itself will affect it. And then um, depending on the nature of a fault, an arcing fault, does have an impedance by very nature that it's arcing through the air. It's literally the impedance of the air gap itself that's causing the, the air around it to ionize. Um, but typically, you don't have to get too concerned with the real details and the vocabulary for this. Essentially, essentially for as far as the PE exam is concerned, they're really only consider, concerned with two types of faults. Um, the first is unsymmetrical faults, which will completely be dedicated to symmetrical components. And then symmetrical, a.k.a. three-phase, a.k.a. worst-case scenario faults. Um, remember that a three-phase fault is always going to be the worst, um, the worst, uh, highest fault magnitude. How about that? It's, you're going to have the most potential energy, right? Because you've got a fault across all three phases. Um, so if a problem doesn't specify, if it doesn't say find the positive sequence, find the negative sequence, um, if it doesn't allude to needing symmetrical components to solve, then it's going to be a real nice, easy breezy uh, fault current analysis problem, which are there. There, it's just standard circuit analysis once you get the hang of them. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Anybody else? Nope. All right. 